Hey everybody, welcome to another video of mine and um, we are going to be doing some more with Brusho. I've had lots of people commenting um, saying, you know, that this is a really cool technique and uh, or a really cool product and you know, they never heard of it or some people have heard of it, they just didn't know how to use it or didn't know how to paint with it. So I just wanted to uh, do a few more videos um, showing you. The last one I did, um, let me see if I can find, oh, so I just showed you a simple way to paint some grass with this. And uh, this one, we're going to paint, we're going to use the whole piece. So you could do this as a whole painting or you can use it as part of a painting. So I'm just, um, we're going to be kind of doing like a forest setting or like trees. So I've got some colors here and I've got the brush show from Colorcraft and I've got um, some Lindy's Stamp Gang Magicals. So this one is called Tweedledee Denim and it's quite a dark blue. This one is Curiouser Chartreuse and it's uh, kind of a yellow green. And then I've got some emerald green here, um, which is, I've uh, got some yellow in it as well. And some leaf green which has some reds in it, some yellow from Brescia, which has some oranges, ultramarine, um, probably just use that at the bottom, I think, I don't, I'm not sure, and then brilliant red. So if you don't know what Brescia is and you need to, you're wondering what's going on here, you can go to this link right here, it's just coming across at the top, it's my intro to Brescia, and I also have another video where I swatched it out, so you can check that out. And I will just have those coming right up there, and at any time you can click on the I to uh, make them come up again. Uh, but this is all in the same playlist right now uh, for my watercolor giveaway. So uh, check out the watercolor giveaway video that's in this playlist to find out how you can enter. Um, there's just a couple more weeks here, or maybe just a week, uh, depending on how many videos uh, kind of ends uh, end of February and then I'll do the draw around uh, March sometime in March sometime so uh, there is uh, I'll let you know when the last video is up so until then you know you can still enter um, so you still have time to watch the videos because I'm going to be doing a few more and I'm just going to try to do like a marathon filming thing here I've been busy with stuff uh, and my husband has been gone uh, but I'm going to try to get a whole bunch of videos going up here to get these done. And uh, what you're also going to need, this is a cool technique, you can use it with brush or you can also use it with watercolor, which this is basically watercolor pigments, powders. I have some bleach, it's just regular bleach, There's, it's not watered down. This is happens to be lemon scented, that really won't matter. Um, you may want to use gloves for this, I am hoping to not touch the bleach. So. What we're going to do is we're going to sprinkle some of this here, just kind of um, towards the bottom a little bit. Oops, I guess I should take that all off. So I don't know if you can see there's orange on this. Uh, so these, but this is a general green color. I'm just going to set that to the side. Now I'm using this uh, Curious Sir Chartreuse. So this is one of the One's from the Alice in Wonderland set that Lindy's Stamp Gang had. And then Tweedledee Denim. I'm just going to put even farther down. So this is going to be mostly in the bottom. Well, I'll put some at the top or some throughout too. But um, let's do some emerald green. Did I do yellow? I don't know. Don't need that much. Uh, we'll just leave that for now. Um, and then I'm going to just lightly spritz this. We're going to need some more green in there. Um, let's just And then I'm going to just uh, put this 
down because we do want it to be like remember this is a forest kind of um, that we're painting here and I'm just going to let that kind of go so the reason why I'm doing this is to leave darker pigment at the bottom and then uh, lighter pigment going towards the top so in a in a forest or a bunch of trees that's basically how it is right so the, the difference between the two brands of these powders is not a whole lot in how they work. Um, I, the Lindy Stamp Gang is probably cheaper, I'm pretty sure it is, and at least from where I had to get it and get, to get it shipped and whatever in Canada. The other thing with the Lindy Stamp Gang is that they have shimmers in them and the Colorcraft Brusho, I believe, does not have shimmers in them. So I really, <clears throat> I really want to get this. There we go, we got some good green here going. Another thing you can do is just dip your brush in some water and add some water going down. Make sure it's clean water. That can help. Hopefully you can see this. I know it's kind of at an angle, so it's kind of weird. I want some of that blue to go up, so I'm going to get some of that going up a little bit better. I don't mind if some of this stays, you know, a little bit speckled. Just to add some texture. Keep that going. Down. Um, let's see. Now I just want to take a look here and see what I'm going to have to add. Okay, so as you can see, there's not a whole lot of depth or shadows in there, so I do need to add some more um, in there. Just a little bit throughout there. That'll be good. And then I'm going to add some of this, um, there was a blue, or no, I'm just going to add some of this turquoise, or ultramarine, I think. So I do want a little bit of the blue. And if you find it too intense, you know, just add, add more water and it'll, like this blue is a little bit too intense. Add some water. I just want to make sure it goes kind of straight down. And it hasn't started going at the bottom of this page, so if I just add water right where it's kind of starting to go off a little bit, then hopefully I can get that to go more. Even if you just want to brush that whole area, and just cover that with water, you can do that. And you can do this as light as or as dark as you want. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of going out like that. Um, I think I need a little bit more of the ultramarine, maybe over here. It's not quite. And then I don't know if I did much of this here. Let's try this drop dead. And you really don't need very much pigment. Oh yeah, I like that. At all which is why I keep just a little tack in there. I don't ever open the whole lid uh, because I just, there, there's too much of a risk of spilling and you can just, this lasts a long time if you don't spill it. So that you can see how, you know, this could turn into you using certain colors. You could do this as a sunset, sunrise, um, northern Lights, I'm actually seeing a lot of Northern Lights. I live up north in Canada, so I see a lot of Northern Lights. Um, uh, some of you who don't ever get to see Northern Lights might be like, what? I don't see Northern Lights. Uh, because, you know, it's just not really on your radar. Uh, let's, let's stick some of this red in here. Just, oh, I love that texture. Oh, my goodness. You guys must know that when... <laughs> 
those of you who watch me regularly are probably like, oh, she's singing, so she really likes whatever's going on. That might be a little bit too much red, but um, as it mixes, hopefully it'll, and that's okay. I mean, we can put red in a forest, right? Uh, let's add some of this leaf green down here. I don't want to add, I kind of wanted that texture there, and I kind of got rid of it, but I might be able to bring it back once it's dry. So I'm just going to leave this because there's lots of water on here now. And I'm going to actually, I mean, when I say leave it, I'm going to leave it with the water and just sprinkle a little bit more because I do want some more blocks of colors. Um, oh, okay. My sisters are texting me and my phone keeps going off. And I'm ignoring it, but it's probably coming up on the, on the thing. Um... Could I use? I just want like a really good. Well, this emerald green is good. I like the emerald green. Okay. Nope, not that. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm not. I'm just kind of touching it with a wet brush because this does need to. I don't know how much you can see this. I'm trying to show this on camera, but there, this is a little bit more what I like. I can take some of that pigment actually, put it here. Okay, now we're starting to get the intensity that I want. Um, and then I just want maybe a little bit more throughout here. Let's try the turquoise again. Was, do I have the turquoise? Here it is. Just in the middle there. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come back. Oh, also while I let it dry, I'm going to let it dry standing up. <laughs> so if that, if that doesn't work, cause it curls, right? Um, you could tape it down and then, you know, you have the surface and then you could just prop the surface up. But I can flip it like this and, oh, there's getting a good yellow in there. That's kind of awesome, I like that. Um, anyways, okay, we'll come back when this dries. <laughs> All right, so this is dry. You can see some of that, those sparkles in there from the um, magicals. So what we're gonna do now, you don't wanna use a really good brush. Uh, so I have some older brushes that will brush okay. And oh, you can see all that glitter in there. And, uh, but they're still, I don't care if they, because you're using bleach, so you do not want to use good watercolor brushes for this. But you want to use some that will do, you know, a little bit of what you, kind of what you want to do. Uh, so we've got some texture, a little bit in here. I might want to add some more, uh, just because there's not a whole lot. I didn't leave as much as I wanted to. <laughs> So I'm going to start with this one and we'll do some thicker branches. So I'm just going to put this right here. And I'm just going to go through and just kind of twist it up. And do another branch. So yes, we're painting with bleach people. Awesome, hey? Um, let's do another Yeah, let's do another one this way. Just kind of crossing over. When you do trees and forests, you want to really try to think of how they would be normal, like 
in nature. They're going to cross over in front of each other. Some are going to be behind, some are going to be forward. And so you really want to um, try to capture that in your painting. And some are going to lean right over like that one. So you do want to think about the, the composition, but you can also go with what you have in there. Now, I don't have as much texture as I would like, so I'm going to be adding some more, but I'm just going to kind of put in a few trees here. Let's have one kind of going out to the side. And this one kind of going out there. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that for now. And I'm going to put the lid on the bleach so I don't, you know, have to deal with all that. And I am going to see. So this is actually an experiment because I've never actually done this. I'm going to see if it works to add some texture on already uh, already kind of a layer of brush. Come on, come on. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at that. Tweedledee denim. This does not look like denim. denim. Yeah, so that's good. I don't want to add any um, more water to that. It's very easy to <clears throat> it's very easy to add too much water. So you can see I mixed that with bleach, and it turns or I put it in the bleach where I put it, it. It's turning brown. Where it's not in the bleach, it's blue. I have no idea why. That is something I am going to have to look into because I am loving it. Um, let's put some green down here, see what the green does, in them. and I love it because it just kind of is going up the tree there a little bit, okay, another thing you could do if you want to make sure you're not adding too much water is just do little splotches, or even just touch it a little bit just so it kind of moves around. I don't want blobs. Lightly spritz it. That looks a lot better. I think I'm going to get a dark brown in there. I, can... I have to figure out why that went orange. I mean, I know there's other pigments in there, but I don't think it's quite like that. I'm going to put a few just on the bottoms of the trees here. This is not coming out, so I'm going to just poke it a little bit. I have a bigger hole in this one. Come on, there we go. Yeah, I really like that whole idea of adding on top of other layers. Make an impact here. I don't want it to be too rainbowy, so I need to put some black in there just to darken that up. This is kind of awesome. Okay, I'm going to go further away. If you go right up, it's going to be more water puddles. If you just spritz lightly, you'll get just a few there. Okay, that's good enough. This is starting to, so what you can do is you can pick this up, or you can actually, another good thing is to just, if you've got too much, just soak it up, and that can also be used as like a texture thing too. That looks like something that might be kind of fun. It's obviously going to have shimmer, well, not obviously, but it does have shimmer in it. I'm talking without thinking again. just want that to roll, just to roll, I just want that to run just a little tiny bit. Just, let's, let's do some fun things on the treats, shall we? Boop, boop. Now that they're white. But we still need them to look natural. 
Remember, Janelle, we're going for natural. This is not necessarily natural. Okay, that's good. Let's just wash this out a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put these away. I've got my texture back, which is what I needed at the bottom, and that looks amazing. And I might add some texture at the top too, but I just want to get some other things kind of figured out. So now I'm going to use my smaller brush here. And I'm going to do some littler branches, just kind of where I think they need to go with the bleach again. Um, so the thing is, this is quite a smaller brush than, than this. So you want to kind of account for that. You don't want to have, it needs to be, you know, to scale. So a branch coming off of this is going to be a little bit thicker than that for the most part. Um, and then a branch coming off of here will just be a nice little skinny one. And I am not using, normally I would use a liner brush for this, but I don't, I, I don't see a liner brush that I'm willing to get wrecked. I know, I thought I had some, but I can't find any. And so we're going to just try this. I think in the last video I showed, I was talking about using a liner brush and that you needed to use a liner brush for, oh, for the grasses, that's the one I did. So right here, if I do a branch coming like this, it's going to look just a little bit off. Um, so I just need to make it a little bit thicker, just a little bit thicker. So it's kind of like makes sense that it's growing off of there. And that one looks like it's behind just naturally. So we're going to go with that. And I just want quite a few. Um, that one looks like it's coming out of nowhere. This one didn't get bleached very much. And remember, we're crossing over. I always tend to have, like, end up having a V. So I'm going to try to avoid that. And so, you know, when you're talking about learning how to paint and stuff, the more you paint, the more you'll realize, okay, so I tend to do this when I'm painting. I tend to do this. I need to work on not doing that. The only way you're going to figure that out is by painting lots. And there we go. I just want to... I mean, it does make sense. They're going to be kind of like an umbrella at the top, but I don't want it to be too obvious. So you just kind of, kind of wait to see what you're doing. Um, so if I give you any information about painting branches or trees, it is that you have to think about the thickness. The thing that's going to make it work is the thickness and the thinness of branches. And they're going to get thinner as they branch out. So if I was to branch out another branch, if I was to go from a branch out there, that would also get skinnier. Does that make sense? So you need to keep that in mind. It's, it's actually kind of important when you are doing trees. Otherwise, it just look, can look really weird. These ones I want to kind of put in the background. So I'm hoping... I don't want that one to be exactly symmetrical. The, that's the other thing with branches, with trees, is a lot of people, when I teach classes like paint nights and stuff like that, um, with people that don't paint, um, the the tempting thing is to just do a symmetrical, you know, without even thinking about it. People don't even, you know, they just start doing it right. And so you want to be careful of that. And we all kind of... Okay, so now I am going to uh, sprinkle. So I'm going to dip this this one here, 
I'm just going to tap a little bit of bleach off and I'm going to splatter. And eventually, hopefully, these splatters will show up. This would be another good way to do snow if you wanted to. This isn't really a winter picture. You could do so much with this technique. Like, I know there's some of you are just like, oh, I could do this, I could do this. You can do it with flowers, like so many cool things. I'll, I'll definitely be doing some more videos, but they won't be in this giveaway. They won't be because um, I want to make sure I show you guys lots of different techniques. Um, oh, this bleach. Got to cover that up. When I, cut, when I remember to cover it up, I'm fine. When I don't, um, does bleach, like, if you smell too much of it, does it kind of get you a little bit woozy? Or woozy, but not in a good way? Or does it get you woozy in a good way? I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do too much for there. So now I just want to add a little bit of leaves. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spritz this first, just a little bit. Okay, so you can see actually the paper was rising there. So I've got a bunch of different greens and I'm just going to do, do, do. And I need to remember not to go crazy with these. So I'm going to use a few different uh, greens. Uh, that I was then what I used before, but I really like the emerald green uh, from Russia. And um, I think it'd be good to add a little bit of fur. Let's add some of this steampunk sepia in there too. Wow, that comes out fast. Why is that coming out so fast? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, is that all I wanted to do? I think so. We'll see. So you have to be patient, which I'm not, because I'm adding water because I want to see what it's going to do, but I need to let it work. Okay, so here it is, dried, and some of this kind of comes off because it didn't get, I didn't spray it as much, so the powder is just loose, but it's mostly just that glimmer stuff, shimmer, um, but it's, it's still on there. So I am just going to see about refining some of these branches with the bleach. Let's say you don't have any of these cool, awesome things. And you know, you're thinking, okay, well, I think that's something I want to get in the future, but there's other things I'd rather spend my money on. But I'm obsessed with that technique, but I have to have some control with my money. I mean, I say that to myself all the time, uh, but then I still spend and buy the things that I say I'm gonna wait for. If you are like that, but you're you know, better than me, and you actually do have some self-control, you can do this same kind of effect with watercolor. It might not turn out exactly like uh, this, and it probably won't, but I'm actually going to do a video um, and just see if we can get close to it. I'm going to try to use the same colors just so we can compare. That's going to be in another video, though. Um, I don't, I haven't filmed it yet, and I have to film some other videos first before I do that one, but if you are interested in that, and uh, there's a few different techniques that uh, we're going to try, I've actually never tried it, so it's going to be an experiment for me too, um, but we're going to try to get something similar to this, uh, because this is like a watercolor technique, um, so we're going we're gonna to try and see what we can do here. So I don't know if it's really, it is kind of bringing out some of this, 
but because it's so pigmented, like you remember the, the first layer I put on was really washed out with water, and so that really helped uh, the bleach to just work really well. Now we've got some really strong pigments of Brusho in there, so it's not necessarily going to work as wonderful as it did, but we can definitely lighten some of these areas up, and it does help a little bit. And you could even go in with some actual watercolors if you wanted to bring some more of that out and develop the painting a little bit more. Or you can just leave it like this because this is a really cool effect. It's like an abstract effect. So, you, you know, there's different things. You can do as much or as little with it as you want and it can still be a really cool painting. Um, I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, but if I wanted to develop it more and make these branches, of these trees, a little bit more realistic, I could put in some shading here to make this branch look like it's coming forward a little bit. Um, make this branch look like it's going behind a little bit. I could do different things like that, but I kind of like this. It's just a very um, abstract look. See, so that lightens a little bit. Um, and maybe as it dries, it'll lighten a little bit more. Um, I just want to try... Just let's just see if we can get just a few little dots in here. I love this. I mean, look at this. This looks amazing. I'm just gonna uh, zoom in on the camera or on my when I edit this. I'm gonna zoom in. That seems to work better than if I try to zoom in now with the like. I just this looks amazing. You could do so many things with that. Like I, my head is exploding with all the cool things. Like I'm thinking. Because I also do, like, I have, like, a fashion series with watercolor that was a long time ago, and now I feel like I could add so much more to it. Oh, my word! Those are turning red. The little droplets are turning red. Can you see that? They look like blood. <laughs> that is really cool. Like, surprise color, mystery color here. These are turning red. That is just, I mean, you guys, come on, this is amazing. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to stop yelling at you, and I'm going to let you go. But uh, keep your eye out for the part two of this. So um, I'm trying to think of different things I can call it. I don't know what I can call it. Just, just if you're really interested in that, make sure you click the little notification bell. And it will have a similar picture to this, and um, I'm going to try to put it in as one of the videos with this giveaway, but I've learned not to promise things like that because I do have some other videos, and I need to make sure that I, you know, edit and get all those videos done that I really want to uh, for sure put in this. If not, it'll be included right after this giveaway, and I'll put it in um, in March sometime. Uh, but hopefully I will. I really want to put it in as a giveaway. So just keep watching for that. And um, yeah, look at those. That is so cool. Oh! So, I mean, maybe you guys are like, well, yeah, Janelle, it's bleach. Come on, it's going to fade it. Ugh. But um, that it goes red, you just don't expect that. You would expect like a grayish, right? But that's what these awesome pigments are because they have so many different colors of pigments in them. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go. As I said, I was going to end this video about five hours ago. Okay. All right. Bye. See you on the next video.